Good morning, it's Jeremy. It's Saturday, March the 18th. And this morning, I'd like to talk about SPLAT and the digital elevation data that's required to use SPLAT. Now, SPLAT is an RF propagation program. I looked at this uh, several years ago, and I plotted some uh, path coverages for uh, VHF Marine and for uh, UHF TV. And the SPLAT program, I'm just looking at my blog post here. The uh, link is down below the video. Um, the SPLAT program uses data from the shuttle, the SRTM files, HGT files. These are one arc second for 30 meter pixel and three arc seconds for a 90 meter pixel. So that's the data you require uh, to use the program. And there's a conversion uh, utility in SPLAT that you can take the uh, SRTM files, which have an extension HGT, and convert them into SDF, which is a SPLAT data file. Now, when I when I did the uh, SPLAT work a couple of years ago, I used the SRTM files. But recently, someone asked me, um, can I use the uh, CDEM, the Canadian uh, GeoTIFF files? So here's a look at um, the link to the uh, website for uh, the Canadian C CDEM files. But here's the grid just around Toronto here. So this is the, uh, the grid uh, for my location in Toronto. Uh, unfortunately, on that particular uh, file, the CDEM is missing all this data because it's the U.S. border there. So in the blog post, I've used uh, this uh, grid square here as an example. So what I discovered is that you can use, um, there's a utility called GDAL, Geospace, uh, Geospatial uh, Utility, which has... Um, lots of programs in it to do all the work for you and there's a program called Q, uh, QGIS or Quantum uh, Geographic Information System and with QGIS what you can do is you can use the GDAL utility in there and you can convert the CDEM to the SRTM. So let's just look at um, this is QGIS it's a pretty amazing program and you can download it from QGIS, I think it's .org. I've got the link in the blog post. Uh, there's two ways of installing it. You can install it directly. The download file is about one gig. Or you can use the network installer to upgrade an older version of QGIS, uh, QGIS. So that's another option. So let's look at, here's uh, CDEM31D. Um, so that is the... Um, Canadian GeoTIFF. So when I click on here, it, it opens in QGIS. And down here, this little box here is really useful. You can type anything in there and it'll find it for you. So there's a, a utility called GDAL Info. And when you hit that, it gives you the raster information. Okay, so I'm just going to run this. And it gives you all the raster information for the, uh, the Canadian uh, GeoTIFF. Now let's look at uh, an SRTM file just for comparison. You can do the same thing there. Let's look at for the SRTM. So there's uh, North 44 West 080. This is an option here. I'm going to pick the one meter accuracy. Notice that the um, the SRT file is um, only one degree. This is like one degree in latitude from there to there. So that's like, I think it's 44 to 45. And here it's 79 to 80, whereas with 78 to 80 with the CDEM, you can put the CDEM on. You can see the difference there. So I can do the same thing there. I can do the GDAL info on this particular file. So in the blog post there, what I've done in the, um, uh, that's, that's some information from the Canadian government about the 31D, what it is. Um, there's the GeoTIFF. I put it on um, OpenStreetMap. You can do that with QGIS, which is really neat. You can sort of locate it um, on a map. And there's the um, N4480.htt. So the objective is to convert this to that. Now, if you look at the, there's the GDAL info for the 31D, and there's the GDAL info for the, um, the HTT file. In the table here, you can look at the differences. So the differences between the GeoTIFF and the SARTM is, first of all, 
uh, they're different um, geographic coordinate systems. So the GeoTIFF is in, at NAD83. That's the Canadian system there. And the SRTM is WGS84. The area coverage is different. Like I said, there's one degree in latitude, two degree in longitude for the GeoTIFF, one degree of latitude and one degree of longitude for the SRTM. Here's a big one, the pixel size. Pixel size is smaller on the GeoTIFF, so it gives you 0.75 arc seconds, whereas this is one arc second. File size is different. The block uh, size is different, but the data representation is the same. So basically what we have to do, if you want to, um, let's go back to QGIS. If you want to convert uh, the CDEM to uh, an SRTM file, what you have to do is you have to crop it. Okay, you've got to crop it. And to do that, you use a, a utility called GDAL warp. So there's GDAL warp. Okay, and whoop, that's not the right one. Do that again. There we go. There's GDAL warp. So what we're going to do is we're going to crop it. So it'll be the same um, latitude and longitude as the SRTM file. We're going to change the sampling because if you remember here, uh, the sampling is different. So we're going to crop it. We're going to change the sampling. And we're also going to change the geo geographic projection. So that's the first step. We have to use GDAL warp. So in here, for instance, the input layer will be uh, the CDEM. The source will be the NAD83. The target will change the projection. We want WGS84. Now, the resampling method, there's a reference which I found which is really good. I've noted that in the blog post. Um, the fellow who... Um, is in the reference there. He's picked this one, the land sauce windowed sink. I get a much better result with that. Uh, the output file resolution in here, what you have to do is you've got to put in uh, this particular value. So put in clip this, sorry, this one. This is the one you want because you want to go to this value. You got to resample to the target. So you put that in there. Okay, uh, what other parameters? And then, um, now this is very key here. You've got, this is the, the boundaries. Now I'm cheating here because um, I'm going to use, I've loaded the uh, SRTM file. So I put the boundaries in there from the file. If you didn't, obviously you're, you're trying to convert this to create that file. So you'd have to look up exactly what the boundaries are. That's key. So you've got to find out of the SRTM that you want to create. You have to find out what those, those boundaries are. So that's basically it. And then down here, save it to, uh, save it to a file. Uh, and I've saved it to um, over here. I've already created it. And I've saved it to, let's see, what did I save it to? I called it 031 resample. Okay, so that's the first step. So you run that. I'm not going to do it. Um, the results are in the blog post. And then what you get is, let's undo this. You get this. That's what you get. So the final step then, the final step is you use GD translate. Incidentally, you save this as a TIFF, a geo TIFF. So the final thing is you go to GD, GDAL, Translate. Oops. There we go. And in here, what you're going to do is you're going to take this and save it. You're going to save it as an HTT file down here. So you're going to save it to an HGT. You can't give it an arbitrary name. You also have to know exactly which uh, SRTM file you want to save it to. So you have to type in here North 44 West 080 HT. So that's basically it. So once you do that, then you've created your um, 
CDEM and um, it's converted to uh, an HDT which you can then feed into Splat. Now just to test, uh, there's the blog post here, this is the uh, first step, the second step. What I did in the blog post is I drew an arbitrary um, path just to compare. So this is a profile on um, 31D, the original CDEM. This is the profile on the resampled one. This is the profile on the original HDT file, and this is a profile on the converted one. So you can see they're pretty uh, close. I also did a spreadsheet to compare the values to see um, how good they were. They differ. The worst case is about a 12 meter difference, which you think, well, that's a lot. It only happens in a couple of instances, but actually, uh, there was a 9 meter difference between the 31D and the SRTM to start off with. So typically it's only a couple of meters different. And then I also checked it on Google Earth. I picked a diagonal path from the left bottom hand corner to the top right hand corner exactly on the uh, integral Latin longitude degrees. That's on the converted SRTM and that's Google, Google Earth. And you can see they're pretty close. So basically, in summary, then, what I've done is I've um, come up with a method to uh, convert these CDEM files to the HGT files that you need for SPLAT. Now, I've also noticed on the um, Canadian government website that there's a new type of file out now, which is the HRDEM, which I guess is a, a higher density. So that might be uh, worth looking into as well.